This is the third in a series of videos discussing the analysis of two-level factorial experiments. And before viewing this video, you should have read through the notes, Two-Level Designs, Part 2. Recall in the previous video, we discussed the analysis of a non-replicated or unreplicated uh, experimental design. Since it was unreplicated, we had no degrees of freedom to estimate the noise in the response. So we had no way of easily or directly deciding which of the experimental effects were real and which might simply be noise. In other words, there was no noise measure, so there was no baseline. And we introduced a technique known as Lentz method, which is used based on some statistical theory. Again, I ask you to read the part one notes to learn about the theory. But we introduced Lentz method, and then using Lentz method in what are called pseudo t-tests, we began the procedure of slowly, basically one term at a time, removing terms from the model that were least likely to be significant. And each time we removed the term, that uh, degree of freedom and estimated effect of that term was then reassigned to error. In other words, every observation either contributes to the model variation or to the error variation. If we take a term out of the model, we are explicitly stating the effect is zero. Okay. So we followed Lentz procedure one at a time, removing terms. We eventually removed eight terms, all terms involving C. So the main effect of C and all interactions with C were sequentially removed from the model. This left a full factorial model in A, B, and D. In fact, A, B, and D, a full factorial would have eight runs. If we assume C has no effect at all, this became a fully replicated design. One issue with the manual approach that I used is that there is some subjectivity involved. Two analysts doing the same uh, using the same data, doing the same analysis, may not necessarily come to exactly the same conclusion. So the JUMP software developed what they call the screening platform, which can be used for a number of things, but one of them is for analyzing unreplicated designs. So I'm going to go to the Analyze menu, go down to the Modeling submenu, and select a platform called screening. Okay. And all you do in screening is put in your main effects as X. Screening will then determine what models can be fit. It's a very uh, intelligent platform. So you tell it what the main effects are. It will look at the structure of the data and decide what effects can be in the model. So here is what screening does. It is actually using Lentz method, but it actually has a bit of a twist to it. The p-values that you see are generated by doing 10,000 simulations. In each simulation, they estimate the effect, and they estimate uh, the pseudo t-test, and then the p-values are based on that distribution from the 10,000 tests. This actually makes this method um, more robust and more objective than the manual procedure, and the p-values are generally more reliable. In fact, they are. And I'm going to recommend you only focus on the individual p-values. Okay. So that's the estimated uh, p-value for each of the effects. Jump highlights any effect that had a p-value under 0.1. Again, these are very low power tests based on some hard assumptions about what effects are significant and what are not 
So I'm going to suggest a cutoff of 0.25. In other words, I will put a term in the model with a p-value up to 0.25. So in my uh, display for the contrast, I'm going to actually hold down the control key and click on additional effects. So I'm going to put ABD in the model. I'm sorry, I clicked on the wrong one. I meant ABD. Okay. And notice this platform does not automatically enforce heredity. So if I put ABD in the model, I have to add the BD interaction and main effect D. It's that simple. Okay. So these, so ABD had a p-value under 0.25. I added it to the model, and then I enforced the heredity concept by then adding the BD interaction and the main effect D. Well, notice at the bottom of the report is a button to run a model. So I'm going to run the model. This opens a fit model report, and this gives you exactly the same analysis that we got through the manual procedures. I don't claim in every case this will agree with a manual procedure because, again, the manual procedure of sequentially moving one term at a time from the model inherently in the early stages in particular has some subjectivity. So at least the uh, response um, analysis in the screening platform gives you a more objective way to do the analysis. In this case, we have come to the same conclusion. So in dealing with unreplicated designs, if possible, I highly recommend you use the screening platform. A note of caution, if you happen to have nominal factors with three or more levels and the design is unreplicated, do not use screening. Screening cannot really deal very, very well with uh, nominal factors or categorical factors with more than two levels. Otherwise, it is an ideal place to analyze unreplicated designs. And that concludes this short recording.